Okay, today we are going to talk to Design Pickle. I have the two lovely ladies of this company, Jess and Kate, who are going to tell us about what they do and a little bit more about the company. Let's kick it off, Jess. Hey guys, I'm Jess Guffey. I am the Director of Brand Partnerships at Design Pickle, which means I handle all of our partnerships and public relations efforts. Amazing. Next up, we've got Kate. <laughs> hello, hello. I am Kate Rooney, and I'm the Director of Brand and Content at Design Pickle. So I oversee our, our brand from maintaining it to growing it and also overseeing all of the content that we create at Design Pickle. That's awesome. And I mean, I got to say, I've been involved in the startup community for quite a while now. And your name is kind of becoming a high so household name as far as, you know, branding and companies. And I don't know if it's because people just like to say design pickle. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, to get the elephant out of the room, how did the name design pickle come to fruition? <laughs> oh, gosh, um, great question. <laughs> wish, wish we could we could claim that. But that was all the brainchild of our CEO and founder, Russ Perry. And uh, he knew he wanted to start the company. He knew what the, the whole focus of the business would be. And literally, he just, he likes pickles. And <laughs> um, yeah. we, we, we kind of joke because um, Russ loves to find domain names. Uh, I do too. I think it's fun to search for uh, domains that are available. And Design Pickle was available. So he <laughs> hopped on it, wrote the, uh, dropped up the logo on a napkin, and the rest is history. You know? That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I did. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I did just find out we almost were rubinreview.com instead of design pickle. <laughs> That's a fun little anecdote that I just discovered about really this company. Bullet, yeah. <laughs> so we're very blessed that it's design pickle and not rubinreview.com. <laughs> In a parallel universe, it just wouldn't have been as fun to say. Exactly. Um, I mean, I, I am a big fan of the name personally, because I mean, my great grandfather was actually a like pickle farmer. I don't know if that's the right word for it <laughs> in the manufacturing group. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Um, so I think, you know, name out of the way. Um, let's talk about kind of the core of what Design Pickle is. Who, which one of you is going to give the elevator pitch? Or are we going to like compare shop? You know, who, who's got a better elevator Kate pitch? Kate does the best <laughs> one, I think. We, we love to compete. Uh, I know I'm a little rusty because we haven't been doing live events in a long time. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where uh, the elevator pitch really developed. But mm -hmm. ultimately, De Design Pickle is a flat rate subscription service for graphic design and creative services in general. So uh, all kinds of businesses can sign up and with just a monthly fee, get consistent graphic design created. You just submit requests and they pop up in, in your feed uh, as you submit them. Hmm. That's, uh, that, that didn't sound very sexy at all. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> salivating. I'm <laughs> uh, do different take on it it's like the spotify or netflix but for graphic design yeah, and creative that's services so, that's so much better <laughs> Make it a little in, in, one, in one sentence in one <laughs> sentence brand people just knocking it out of the park um you know and I, I think that there's definitely a good cause for that because when you go with other agencies the price tags get expensive revisions aren't cheap um you know content is something that's you know, essential to businesses and having it on a subscription base is, I mean, in my opinion, one of the best ways to go as a startup. Uh, speaking from the perspective of co-working space, that's our top selling point is that it's a consistent operating expense, consistent line item. Mm -hmm. That being said, would you say that a majority of your customer base would be, um, you know, startups or companies that really depend on that, you know, flat rate? I think it's all over the map. I think we we really have been focusing on narrowing our focus because we used to say Design Pickle works for everyone. And from a marketing perspective, that's probably not the best tactic when you're just trying to speak to everyone in the world. Um, but the reality is a business of any size can benefit from having a flat rate because like you said, it's a known quantity and you know what you're getting from a quality perspective. So it kind of ticks all the boxes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's it. We're, we're seeing more businesses understand the importance of graphic design mm -hmm. and content and understanding that you have to factor that into your budget somehow. But uh, with other methods, it's it can be inconsistent. Some, some months you're paying way more and some mm -hmm. months you're paying nothing at all. So uh, if you can just have a system that you factor into your budget and is the same month over month, uh, a lot of businesses are, are tuning into that. 
Hmm. So when you guys first started out, I mean, when was that? When was Design Pickle founded? 2015. We're actually wow. celebrating our sixth birthday this month in January. Congratulations. Hey. So <laughs> you're you're on your six six year mark, six and your six year anniversary, and um you cast a wide net, you're starting to narrow that down. Um how how is your team handling the the zeroing in on clientele? I think everyone's really relieved. <laughs> words right out of my mouth. Everyone said the same thing. Everyone's relieved because uh, everyone at Design Pickle, we're all uh, advocates for what we do because we mm-hmm. we really believe in it. It's it's a powerful product, and, and we all use the product too. Absolutely, yeah, to we know. do. So, uh, just hit hit it earlier, saying you know we we want everyone to use Design Pickle. Everyone mm-hmm. should use Design Pickle. It's it's great for any kind of business, but just internally being able to focus in on more distinct personas has helped us narrow our focus and hit our goals more closely instead of just casting a wide net to everyone. And I think it makes it easier to answer the why. We always ask that before we dive into a project, but now it's like, okay, we're doing this because it fits this persona that we're really honing in on targeting. That makes a lot of sense. Now let's talk about how you guys ended up at Design Pickle. Let's take a couple of minutes and talk about your your journey. I mean, what do you, you looked at the the application and you were like, "That's me," or did you get pulled into it? How did each of you get to this company? Oh, Kate, man. you have a better story than I do. Yeah, I mean, I I was a a full time graphic designer uh, at the time, and oddly enough, a design pickle ad popped up on my feed and it caught my eye because I mean, obviously the name is silly and I'm kind of a silly person too. So I, I thought that was fun. And I, I checked them out. Um, and at the time I didn't really understand the business model. So I was like, Oh, are they hiring other designers? But it actually looked like they, they needed help with marketing and branding. So jumped at the opportunity and, uh, that was that was three years ago. So we were halfway through. The team was much smaller, uh, and I I'm just very grateful for the opportunity because I was able to to come in at such a pivotal moment and be such part of such a fun brand from from the get go. Do you remember what the ad looked like? <laughs> I yes, I do. It was the our old green uh brand colors and i think oh. i think it was a picture of, of our ceo and our our vp of, of culture um them just like looking silly and i was like what is that it was really the name that caught my eye and just these two guys who looked super serious next to a, a pickle ad i was like what is this this is so weird and i love it i want it i love it Wow. What's your yeah. story? Um, I saw the job posting on LinkedIn and to this day, I'm unclear on what the job was. <laughs> but but <laughs> I, it was like two sentences, but I was like, this is a really intriguing model. And that was about uh, a year after Kate. So I'm approaching two years with the company. Um, but I applied and then Russ Perry, our CEO, reached out to me on LinkedIn and was like, are you serious about this application? Like, are you actually interested in working for our company? And I was like, yeah, but just so you know, I don't like pickles. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, it ended up working out. And I think my role has changed 25 times since I started. Still don't know what that description was for, but here we are <laughs> two years later. I mean, I'm an, it, it doesn't, it didn't take much to convince either of you. I mean, you've, got, <laughs> you've been there for like three years. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. What's but, wrong with us? Well, you put it that way. I mean, it just, I mean, it's I mean, really good advertising, apparently. <laughs> well, I think like- too, when you get to interact with the brand and like talk to Russ and see how passionate he, he is about the company and, you know, he really means what they have out there in the world. So he backs up with the ads and job postings and stuff say, that's what did it for me. Not 100%. the two sentences. <laughs> Not the two sentences at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was just cast in the hook, you know, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, you've mentioned that your team's expanded. Um, how many people operate under the Design Pickle brand now? Oh my gosh, we're at over 600 people globally now. Um, and we have about wow. 52 people, 54 people in our uh, global HQ. So based in the US. That's wild. That's- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
consulting like 75. I don't know why. Yeah. That's a really big agency, even from, I mean, you know, large agency standpoints, that's like double or, or triple some of the local ones. I mean, I, I actually, I worked in marketing for quite a long time. And I, I remember some of the agencies that were charging an arm and a leg held like six people. <laughs> I'm like, the six of you are just killing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the difference is, I mean, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily consider us an agency, but more this term that we're, we're working with called subscription workforce, which is uh, similar to an agency. If you, you need a, a service or something to, to promote your business, there are so many different ways to get it. But our, our version of that is a subscription and you can build a whole team around that. And just, it's not limited to just graphic design, but you can hire people who are, have already been trained uh, we, they work within a system and they can hop right into your, your ecosystem and, uh, keep things, things rolling. So that's kind of like our version of, it's like the next evolution of an agency in, in our minds. Yeah. yeah and think. really combining that idea of a full-time person, an agency, a freelance market, um, putting those all together so that you're getting the best of everything and making sure that it works for you and can scale up or down with you rather than just getting stuck with someone that maybe isn't the best fit and having to work with HR down the road. We've all been there. Um, but really making sure that people can kind of overcome that and not have those headaches when they work with us. So, I mean, I, I, I got to ask, with it being a subscription-based model, um, you have to have waves of work. Everyone decides they're going to ramp up their seasonal marketing. Everyone wants to capture this other opportunity. I mean, how do you juggle those, like, peaks and lulls? Hmm. Really good sales, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kate's team kills it with really creative promotions. I think the one that comes to mind, and Kate, you can speak on this more, but we did a Scaretober promotion. So it was a sale around that. And our video team just basically recreated famous horror scenes, but with the pickle. So <laughs> when people when people were scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or whatever, they saw these ads and they were like, what is this? But it ended up being for our sale and that sale performed extremely well. So yeah, get, getting creative with it. And also for, for businesses that go through lulls like that, uh, like I said before, you you might be paying a, a freelancer or an agency an exorbitant amount of fees for that one period of time that you're going through all of that. But on that off off time, you, you still need content created. Mm -hmm. um, so your budget is it's it's hard to to manage that because it's not consistent. You don't really know how much you're going to spend. But with this model, you can request the same amount of work, and it will always be that flat fee. So there's no surprises with it regardless of how much uh, you're, you're going to be requesting at the time. And with Design Pickle, you can also add, you can like stack subscriptions. So say you do know that your, your holiday season is going to be a crusher. It's going to mm -hmm. be insane. You can add another subscription to your account just for those couple of months and mm -hmm. then decrease it again when the season is done. And it'll still be that flat rate. So you know exactly how much you're paying month over month. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the business verticals. You have, you know, business to consumer, business to business. Um, do you guys uh, do both verticals or do you strictly do consumer marketing? We're, we're B2B, strictly mm -hmm. B2B. Yeah. I mean, the, it's, it's kind of going back to where like everyone needs design pickle because we yeah. have folks who sign up who are like, they just use it for their family uh, invitations and stuff like that <laughs> or like cards. But uh, for like our, our marketing purposes, we focus mm -hmm. B2B. Yeah, that's a great industry to focus in on, especially with, you know, the a, a mass amount of creatives that can come out of that. Um, let's talk about your, your most favorite and least favorite projects. If anything comes to mind, is there a piece that you were just like, this is everything. I love this. Um, and then is there something that was just like, you know, got your, you know, you're sweating. It was anxiety driven, tight deadlines. Let's you know, compare best and worst. Why not both oh, at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Just, do you have any favorite campaigns? I do. Um, we recently just launched a partnership with a company called Grindology who does coffee subscriptions. And we were like, what better way to feel coffee subscriptions than with graphic design? It goes hand in hand. And they really focus on entrepreneurs and um, feeding that market. 
But as a promo with them, we did a whole campaign around this idea of a golden pickle. So one of the subscription boxes that got sent out, someone would win a free year of our pro service. But the video behind that, (laughs) we encourage everyone to look it up because it feels like a fever dream. Um, It's all based on Willy Wonka. So we had the pickle dressed as Willy Wonka and we had lurking gherkins instead of Oompa Loompas and just really ridiculous stuff going on. And Russ, our CEO, walked down in the middle of us filming it and was like, why do people have orange faces and white eyebrows right now? What is happening? <laughs> We're like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but it ended up being such a strong campaign that we got placements in various media outlets. And the video has a crazy amount of views on YouTube. So it was just a blast to work on. And Kate wrote the lyrics for the song that we created. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I mean, I was going to say the same thing. I think that was one of my favorite campaigns because, I mean, it was so silly, but from the get-go, we had such a strong feeling about it. Like, we were like, we know this is going to be big. We know this is going to be great. And our hunch feeling was uh, was pretty spot on, but just getting the whole team together because we had we had folks in different departments dressing up as Oompa Loompas and it would just got everyone to together and it was silly and it was fun, but we also were, we crafted it carefully. So it still got the message across very, mm-hmm. very well, but um, it was definitely eye catching. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot imagine walking into something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just another day of design pickle though. I mean, it really is. That's just like not even one of the sillier things we've done. And uh, people could look at us from the outside and be like, do you even work? Like, do you, what do you do? All this <laughs> crazy stuff. But a lot of hard work goes into it, uh, crafting the the messaging, coordinating everything. It all, we have a method behind our madness and that's what people have come to know and, and love our brand for. So we're, we're very honored that we get to, to do fun stuff like that. But there's, there's a lot of hard work behind the scenes that people don't yeah. see. I mean, I, I have to imagine being a marketing company, it really just ups the ante as far as marketing yourselves. You know, what are some of the ways that you guys, you know, spread the word about Design Pickle? We have so many different ways. I mean, Kate's team does, I would say, the bulk of it. On my end, it's more from the media and elevating us with partnerships, so really top of funnel stuff. Um, but Kate's team kind of dives into the meat and potatoes of really hitting home our personas and creating content that speaks directly to those people. Yeah, I mean, obviously things have, have shifted in, from 2020 and, mm-hmm. and the pandemic because we did a lot of live events and uh, community events, but we've we've always been in the digital space and just kind of beef that up a little bit more, uh, focusing on our paid acquisition and mm-hmm. uh, our just general SEO and traffic. But I, Jess, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because so much of our, our <laughs> partnerships and uh, our media outlets are, are such a huge, huge influence on, on growing the business. I mean, we still have customers from years ago who say that they discovered Design Pickle from hearing Russ on a podcast or seeing us in, a, in an article. So uh, that's been huge for us. And I think it's, it's underutilized in a lot of companies. Thanks, Kate. Sure. <laughs> come, come on, Jess. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> your own horde you're doing great thanks, <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> such a good ego boost <laughs> so with design pickle being kind of a subscription-based company do you have any major competitors i mean i haven't really heard of anything like this we were really the first ones to do it like this in this space um so any copycats that you see out there now there are plenty of them we really were the first ones in 2015 to launch this type of model with graphic design on a subscription basis um but we look at competitors like other means to get graphic design help like fiverr if you've heard of them um freelance marketplaces will always be something that we have to fight against just because you know, people don't like a subscription model and they seek a different method to get what they're looking for, right? So not necessarily direct competitors, but people that do the same thing in a different format, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's so many different ways to get graphic design. And in my opinion, there's no wrong way. There's no right way. It's just what's right for your business or for you. Um, and 
when Russ created the company, he was thinking about all of the things that make it hard to get graphic design, whether that's cost or time, uh, hiring people, consistency with, with branding, and tried to find the solution that kind of tackles all of those. And that's that's where Design Pickle comes into play because uh, it's cost effective. You know how much you're paying month over month, but you're also... Um, it's reliable. You know what your designer is sending and like usually the timelines of, of what they're sending. You don't have to hire people. Mm-hmm. And we work really well with companies that already have an in-house designer to, to kind of supplement them. So we see a lot of businesses that that do that too. I mean, if you have a, a designer in-house who's focusing on like the big picture stuff and building the brand, you can leverage Design Pickle to execute a lot of the, just the, the general pieces of content or the regular pieces of content. Yeah, I mean, it seems like <laughs> that's a new work from I had to kick my cat out of the room earlier. So, uh, <laughs> you're gonna cause problems, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so we've kind of figured out why Design Pickle is working and why it does work. Was there ever a point where there was concern that it wouldn't work? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like I can't speak to that because by the time I came in, things were moving ahead pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, things have, have ebbed and flowed and we've been in such a, a growth period, but I don't think there was other time we, or at least, yeah, when I, when I've been with the company, it was like, oh, this isn't going to work, but it was more the challenge of how do we grow this to, Mm -hmm. to continue a a growth path other than just like staying stagnant. And that's where we've like launched all these new products and new features because you have to evolve somehow. Um, Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of a lot of, I hate to use the phrase copycats, that sounds so negative, but a a lot of other businesses that are doing the same model, but, mm-hmm. so, you know, how can we go above beyond that? How do, how do we make it better, easier, faster, smarter for our customers? Stay, stay ahead of the game. So with your customers, can you walk me through like a typical creative request? Like, let's say you have a client that wants a banner ad. How would they request that? How would that work? So many <laughs> things. Um, we, we just... Uh, launched uh, or relaunched a, a cleaner, uh, more upgraded version of our platform. And so when you, when you sign in, you just create a new request and we have AI integrated with the platform too. So if you type in the request title and be like Facebook banner, it will automatically populate the exact dimensions you need and everything like that. So that's kind of set in stone, but then, yeah, you just add in your, your details and it's, it's super intuitive. Like it walks you through everything and adds explanations if needed. It's very clean. Um, you would, if you don't have the dimensions, we we have examples for you. Uh, you would just submit like the the directions for what you're looking for. Any copy you want out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, designated brand profiles. So mm-hmm. say you have, you're an agency and you're working with multiple brands at, at one time, you can have those profiles saved. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, if you need XYZ brand, you just click that and your designer knows to use those colors, fonts, logos, and whatnot. Um, gosh, there's so many cool features. <laughs> I don't want to overcomplicate it, but you can drop in any, any assets you need and yeah. then just hit submit and uh, mm-hmm. it goes into the queue. So, I mean, it sounds like, you know, if I was a client, I could have a brand and style guide with my colors that I drop into my profile. And then you just kind of, you know, I'm assuming there's character limitations because you wouldn't let someone put like, you know, 700 words <laughs> on a banner or something. And then well, you know, some worried. people try. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to create whatever you submit. So if you ask for a banner with 700 words on it, we'll make it. We, it's just like that. That is no <laughs> different from. The, the types of requests I would get when I would freelance. I mean, if if mm-hmm. it, someone is asking for that specifically, like, okay, I will do my best. <laughs> uh, that's why we ask, like, make sure your your stuff is proofread. And we're not offering like marketing services. It's mm-hmm. just the the design creation. Uh, we do we do have an add on that's for. Um, project management. So your project manager, if you have the add-on, would probably advise you of like, hey, <laughs> I work. but it's, it's really up to the client to submit the those, uh, I don't know, that framework of what they're looking for. You're like, you want 700 words, you got it. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> they're going right, to be like this I'm big. Gone. but <laughs> Let's go. Giant disclaimer. Um, <laughs> 
So, I mean, with the different product add-ons, I mean, are there tiers to membership levels? Yeah, so we have two different tiers of service for graphic design specifically. One is called Essentials. So that's our base plan, which gets you um, still unlimited requests, still unlimited revisions, pretty much the same scope of work. It's just not integrated with Slack. And then our pro tier of service is integrated with Slack. So you can chat directly with your designer. You can do revisions through Slack. Um, that's what we all use on the DP team. And it's awesome. It's so great. Um, but it also includes a little bit more advanced scope items like infographics and GIFs, um, things like that that are a little more advanced. And then we also offer custom illustrations on top of that as well, which is a separate plan. I love a good infographic. I know that sounds really <laughs> good. I know that sounds <laughs> But, you know, infographics, the, they're, they're my jam. I, I love how you can get creative with, like, the flows. I don't know. Like, I, totally. I'm, I'm one of those people. Click on infographics. I'm like, yeah, I want to learn <laughs> about that flow. We're, all, uh, we're visual right? beings. So getting all the information in a visual way is, is key. So does each designer only focus on a certain type of product item? Or is it kind of like you have, you know, these, you know, 10 clients or what are you going to focus on? So they really are, um, like we have essentials designers, we have pro designers, we have illustrators, and a lot of them, Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, they specialize in certain areas. So if I come in as a new client and I say, I'm really going to need a lot of eBooks designed or a lot of social media graphics, we'll pair you with someone that says that that's their specialty um, and has proven that that's their specialty so that you're getting consistent work that matches with what you actually need. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have uh, the the design teams are broken in into like cohorts, and like Jess said, they they have specializations, and they only focus on those exact products that they they work under. And we we do our best to match our clients with the best designers available for for their needs. And it sounds like the best type of matchmaking program. I love that. It's like <laughs> you need this, you got this. You like to talk, she likes to listen. <laughs> What's funny is we actually talked about applying what we use for our matchmaking for designers for a dog app um, to match dogs together for play dates. Oh. So that might be on the horizon. Who knows? A lot of, a lot of dog lovers. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, man. It would never work for cats, but it would. <laughs> So, I mean, the the two of you have such a great personality and great energy. And I mean, you seem like you're, you're naturals in, in podcasts and communication. Are you guys planning anything on the horizon? Any live shows, podcasts yourself? Well, um, <laughs> about a year and a half ago, we were at a leadership retreat in Idaho. Our CEO used to have property there. And Kate was adamant about us doing a podcast that was different than what normal businesses do for podcasts. And in October of this year, this past year, we actually went live with it. So I will let her talk about it because it is her brainchild. Gosh, <laughs> I'm just actually? along for the ride. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we podcasts are huge right now. Uh, a lot of businesses are, are creating branded podcasts. And just said about a year and a half ago, it was like, we got to do this. We're, we're so skilled at content creation. Design Pickle loves content. We, we nail content, but how do we, how do we go above and beyond? How do we make this different? Because uh, so many business podcasts are strictly that they're just talking business. They're just promoting their brand, but we've always kind of been quirky and offbeat. So uh, I, I can't remember how, the name came up. The name came before the actual concept, which is hilarious. It's like design pickle. Uh, and it was just like, we're such a creative company. We're all about creativity, but like sometimes creative people are really the worst. We're, we're so finicky. We're just like, man, we have such a bad reputation. So uh, that's kind of where the idea, idea came from is like, how do we explore creative people and the process and why creative people operate the way that, that they do. Uh, so creatives are the worst was born and in, in coming up with the, the concept for it, uh, I, I felt like it needed to be uh, people who already have good rapport and uh, can have decent banter. And so Jess, Jess was on the list. <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> Wait, that, that came out so wrong. That's not how I'm sure that was on the two sentences of your job description. 
<laughs> yeah, number one, oh, must develop good rapport with Kate Rooney. <laughs> I mean, actually, when we first started it, Jess and I tested some some different formats, and it it kind of started out to be a little bit more serious. With like, mm-hmm. we're going to cover people who've really like changed the world and just be super positive. And it was like, no, the the title is creatives are the worst, so it, we have to we have to kind of push the envelope a little bit. And so we've we've covered people from like Prince to. Brian Wilson, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. So it's all of these people who you wouldn't think like, what, why, what do they even have in common? But it's just these people who are wildly creative. They kind of have that entre- entrepreneurial mindset of like, I got to get my idea out there. I have to share this with the world. And finding that common thread between all of them and the differences between them uh, and, and how their creative process is. Which I don't even think we expected to find so many similarities, but it feels like every episode we're about to have 20 episodes out, which is yeah. surreal. Um, but every episode we're like, oh, we talked about this with so-and-so or Bill Murray really showed that he was terrible in this way. And so does XYZ person. So it's fun to find now that we're a little bit further in what things are coming up that we can talk about over and over again with these people, because sometimes they really are the worst. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I I was, as you were talking, I was kind of laughing in my head because, you know, initially I was like, oh, they interview creatives and Vincent Van Gogh. I'm like, I'm sure he was very lively. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying not to laugh at my own joke in my head. (laughs) We actually did a uh, performed a seance and uh, (laughs) Vincent came on. (laughs) (laughs) It was very hard of hearing, though. So it was. was (laughs) Didn't have the new iPhone, you know, headphones. (laughs) Uh, anyway i mean and one of the things that i've gathered from all of this i mean you keep name dropping your ceo and like the strange like you know in his home in idaho and i'm like (laughs) okay you're like he was on an ad holding a pickle he walked into a willy wonka i mean like you know this guy has to have a really interesting life and i have to ask what is the culture like at design pickle I think when the company was founded, it was always made clear. We've had the same core values since the company was founded by Russ and one other person in 2015. And I think that really is important to shape our culture. We actually just had a whole week last week for our leadership team called Big Pickle Week, where we talked about our culture. And because, yeah, we can't just call it Leadership Week. We have to call it something different. So it's Big Pickle Week. Um, But we were all reminded, and Kate chime in here too, but I think it was a really good refresher on how we got here with our culture because of our core values. And it really is so evident that if people don't live up to our core values, they're not a good fit for the company. And we really have to take that into consideration when hiring and evaluating external talent, but also in every project that we do. If a project isn't adhering to our core values of truth or friendly or smart working, then it's probably not the best thing for us to be working on. Um, So I think that's the biggest part of our culture as of today. Yeah. Yeah. Culture is huge. It always has been. And it's been interesting because it's it's feels easier to maintain culture when you are a smaller company or a smaller team. And we've learned that it, it takes effort to keep the culture alive as, as you grow. Uh, but we're fortunate enough to, to have a company and leadership that recognizes that and actually puts effort into uh, maintaining the culture and, and building upon it. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate with that. And it's always kind of been you're free to be yourself, which is great. Uh, but kind of how do you scale that? How do you grow that as you get all these new faces and, and new experiences on the team? Uh, but the, the ultimate thing is, like, we're here for each other and uh, we stick to our, our core values and our overall company vision to, to change lives through creativity and it's not even just like a a catchphrase. It's like we actually repeat that and adhere to it, which is really cool. So I came up with a pitch in my head and it's like, (laughs) design pickle, bring us your creative requests. It'll be no big deal. (laughs) Something there. We love love welcome. You're part of the jar now. (laughs) It's your first pickle pun. (laughs) I'm speaking the the jargon. (laughs) I had a roll. Oh my gosh. I love the pickle puns. We look for it. I love to see it. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it's uh, between that and you know making up names for my eventual fictitious crepe business. I mean, <laughs> things are just going really well. What is your crepe business? Oh my gosh, no, let's talk more uh, about that. <laughs> okay, one of uh, I don't know how to make crepes. But if I ever <laughs> off to a great start, if, if I ever um, if I ever did, there's the crepe escape, the crepe Gatsby. <gasps> holy crepe. Um, <laughs> I love all of these. Thank how you. would we possibly choose? How could we possibly? It's the name <laughs> for the business that comes about. But that's when I'm trying to distract myself or I'm trying to, you know, pull my brain away from something. I come up with names for my crepe business. <laughs> So, I'm feeling YouTube well, exists for a reason. You I know. can learn how to make crepes. <laughs> That's secondary. Pancakes first, crepes second. <laughs> it's just like a flat pancake, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. There's something French about it that I just haven't um, quite Here's grass. one to just put into your bucket for later. Okay. Holy crepe. I just said that. Oh, you did? Oh, shoot. <laughs> cut this. Cut that, was this right, that was right before a crepe escape and then before You're the. You're fired, Kate. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> I was so excited about this idea. I was like, oh. "You're like, holy crap! This is a great holy idea." Crepe. She's never heard of this before. <laughs> well, I will keep pickle puns in mind. You keep crepe puns in mind, and then for our listeners to keep in mind, let's give one piece of advice you can give to a company who's starting out in marketing. What, what's one thing they should know? Only one. You can't pick. Well, each of you can pick one. So two things. I would say. Keep room to play. So we always find that our best brainstorming sessions come when we allow ourselves to be really silly and funny. Um, and the best ideas can often come from that. If you don't have strict parameters, you don't have an agenda, it's just a time to set aside to really create and be weird and enjoy each other's company. And I think oftentimes when people are first starting out, they forget to do that, even if it's just by themselves, but leave time to create and really get outside yourself and have some fun because if you don't have fun, then what's the point? Can you beat that, Kate? <laughs> no. Well, we, we just and I joke about how we are have the same brain because we're usually on the same wavelength. And my my advice is very similar, but more related to the current times. And you know, just pointing out that you're you're not alone in everything that's going on. I think a lot of people, even if they're not expressing it, they're we're still being affected with how the world has changed and we're, we're stuck at home. And that can be really hard for content creators. I mean, yeah. when you're, you're sitting at home every day, it's like, I have nothing to share because <laughs> it's just the same view, same, same stuff every day. Uh, but you can really, this can force you to kind of think outside the box a little bit more. And we've had to do that too. So just think creatively, creatively, I cannot talk about what, what you can present Creatively, there we go. <laughs> but what you can do in, in your home, even without uh, having to to go to a studio and make stuff or going somewhere. So we've done things like we've done. Uh, each team member has done like a famous art piece recreation, and we've shared that on social media. We've done partnerships where it's like a, a Zoom room, but playing like a a trivia game. So just thinking outside the box of what you can do within within your box at home. I mean, you just inspired me. Creativity, creativity. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. That happened. That happened because of you guys. Wow. wow. I thought my you were job here is done. <laughs> Before your job is done, I need to, how, how can people learn more about design pickle? How can they get in touch with you and start, start getting their crepes on? <laughs> You better be careful. Someone's going to steal your idea and become a design pickle customer. As long as I get some crepes out of the deal. You have to claim that, that domain right now. Crepetivity. <laughs> That's Kate's real advice, actually. Buy every domain right. name you're interested in. All the crepes. Uh, my, my real advice, check out Design Pickle at designpickle.com. Uh, we have plenty of resources on there, too, beyond just our, our pricing and our products. You can check out our blog. Lots of fun stuff there. We have a lot of downloadables resources mm. for businesses just looking for info and tips. Also, check out the pod, the Design Pickle podcast called Creatives Are the Worst. Uh, designpickle.com slash podcast and all of the places that you can listen to your podcasts. I guess and you should if Vincent Van, go do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love this so much. I was just going to say, if you want more insight into our culture, we post some fun stuff on social media. Um, we're at Design Pickle across channels, specifically Instagram. We get a little silly on there. So check I'm it out. I'm going to go look at that Oompa Loompa thing. I have to see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll see it. <laughs> You'll see it. <laughs> prepare to be amazed and horrified. <laughs> at the same time. I'm always prepared to be amazed and horrified. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Well, it has been so great chatting with you ladies. And I look forward to seeing more about what Design Pickle is going to do. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs>